My initial game plan for Destination Louisiana with my clientele is to put them on two to three days of solid fishing every year that I'm out here. We're gonna do a little bit of sight fishing in the ponds. We're gonna do some top water fishing for some bull reds. And then there's going to be these, these fish that set up in the drains where you can catch flounder, bass, black drum. This is a very unique fishery, something that is much different than Florida. We're basically fishing a lake and a bay all in one spot. This is where the two environments meet. The gulf is just maybe a half a mile that way, and the river is probably about a mile and a half that way. But this is kind of the intermediate zone. So in here, bass, carp, sheep's head, redfish, black drum, flounder, jack crevel, gar, you're gonna see both environments merge right here, and it's gonna be exciting stuff. You're gonna catch stuff that you never anticipated catching, that you couldn't do at home. We'll find something to put in that Yeti. And on the fire display. And on the fire display later. Taylor Sanders, Chef Taylor Sanders, if you will. She's an amazing kid, uh, or young lady, I should actually say. I mean, just full of energy and just the, one of the most engaging kids that you'll ever come across. And when FireDisc put her on the ambassador program, along with myself and several other people from all types or segments and walks of life, it was interesting after I met her at ICAST that she was also quite the outdoors person. She wanted to fish. To the guys at FireDisc, they've actually started an idea that you're going to play a large role in, which is FireDisc University, where you guys are going to be sharing cooking tips and recipes. This show will probably air before it actually gets kicked off, but it's going to get kicked off pretty soon. So FireDisc University, I'm going to be a host on there, and I'm going to be sharing my recipes and showing people my love for FireDisc and how to use it and teaching people about it and coming up with fun new recipes that absolutely everybody and anybody can use on the fire disc. Um, and I'm really excited for that to come out. But yes, this show will air before the fire disc university comes officially out, but everybody's gonna have to keep the look on for that because I will be on it and teaching you everything to know about fire disc. Here you go, Hello. girl. That's what I'm talking about right there. Just reel to the water. Don't drop the tip too fast. Put a bend in it, just like that. You're doing fine. I'm gonna come down and give you a hand. Oh my God, that's red. You like that? They're pretty red. There you go, you're doing fine. When Taylor came tight on the first redfish of the morning, she was fired up because I don't think she'd ever caught a redfish that just takes drag off the spool and you can't do anything about it. You just, you basically hang on. That's what I'm talking about. Awesome. What a gorgeous fish. To see her in, in action and knowing that this first redfish is going to be her personal best redfish, well, it was satisfying for me. See how pretty they are? They're so much prettier than the fish in Florida. I mean, look at this side. Look at all the spots. Mm -hmm. And this fish is only 23 inches, but it weighs like five pounds. That's insane. Way to get indoctrinated to the pond, huh? More fish tacos tonight. Oh, so we're keeping this one. I'm putting them in the Yeti hopper. All right. I don't normally do this, but I don't normally have a chef on board. Stuck full of ice. There you go, bud. Way to go. Nice. All right, let's do that like 15 more times. Mm -hmm. Down in Southwest Florida, the only redfish I ever caught was about this big. And so I knew I wanted to catch a redfish. So that was mission accomplished with that. Imagine not wanting to come out here because when you 
experience the Delta, which is so much different than fishing in Florida, where there's a lot of metro areas and, and you're inundated with tons of weekend traffic and boats and things like that. You come out here, it's, it's pretty common knowledge that you may not see anyone for two and three days when you come out here to fish. There's a ton of trucks and trailers at the boat ramp. Where they go, I have no idea. But this place is so vast. And when you start running the, the, the bayous that are just lined with rosocane, and you get back into the grass where there's milfoil and hydrilla, and you're watching bass swim around and alligators and just redfish everywhere. It's, I mean, it is one of those places that it sets the bar so high, it's hard to compare it to anything. I'm, if, I, if I'm gonna compare it to anything, I'd have to say it's the Everglades on steroids. Parlor tricks. <laughs> this might be another one for the Yeti. Looks legal. Well, I like it, Chef, when you let when you let the old guy catch one off the back every once in a while. Yep, perfect size. I think he goes in the Yeti. Yeah. If you've never really experienced redfish that live in a freshwater environment, you're, you're missing something. Because sure, my friends in South Carolina and North Carolina and Georgia, they all catch redfish. Certainly everyone in Florida does. Along the whole upper Gulf Coast, we all catch them. But they all look kind of the same. But when you start fishing freshwater ponds where they're eating blue crabs and there's tannins in the water, these fish literally turn into dreamsicle orange. They glow. They almost look like they have a red-orange light inside of them. This one's a good one. Beautiful. With all the fish swimming in the water that kind of blend into the bottom and blend into the background, these red fish here, they literally, well, they look like they're they're on fire. <laughs> He's a lot bigger than you think. Pinch hard, let them know you mean business. I'm definitely not the strongest person you've ever seen, but when CA was reeling in that fish, he had got it caught up all in these weeds, and he was standing up on top, and I go, no, I got it. He's like, no, I'll get it. And I reached down there real quick, and I grabbed all the weeds off and pulled it in the boat, and I'm pretty sure he was really impressed. My God, girl, you are impressing me big time. Big time, girl. You're not only good at catching them, Taylor, you're good at grabbing a hold of them. They're beautiful fish and they taste even better in my belly. <laughs> you know what? You might want to move to Louisiana because these guys around here are going to like you. We're not going to introduce you to any of these boys. When you first are introduced to Taylor, you're just impressed with her as a person. She seems older than what her, her tender age of 17 really is. She's focused. She's not the everyday kid who's locked into their phone or their game console or watching TV or is somehow socially awkward. No, Taylor Sanders is someone who's engaging. You start talking about food, you start talking about hunting, you start talking about fishing, and she's, she's invested in every moment of the conversation. She doesn't tune you out to walk off to the side to look at her phone. I mean, she's really into this stuff. We were getting into the last, what I would say, quarter of our day. We, it was really the end. 
there was a particular drain that I wanted to take Taylor to because I felt like we were going to have a lot of opportunity. The problem with that was there was a storm that was closing the gap between that drain and where I wanted to fish. So when we got there, we knew we had turned the cooking timer on if you will, to put it in relatable terms to Taylor. We had, we had dialed it down and I knew at best we were gonna have 30 minutes there to do what needed to be done. And I was just hoping that the fish were gonna be swimming out of there so she could have a little bit of success. And as luck would have it, that's exactly what took place. Nice, look at the size of that flounder. We're gonna have tacos. Oh, gosh. You have no idea what you've done. You bring a chef, you get something like that. That's gotta be a 22, 23 inch flounder. Look at that. Yes. Oof, them teeth. So are we taking that one back? Um, definitely. Okay, let me open up the... You're killing it. You're killing it, chef. At first I was a little nervous because, I mean, Say knows a lot about fishing and I definitely don't know near as much as he does. But just to be able to fish with him and learn different things and learn about just Louisiana fishing and the differences between that and Florida in general was just such an amazing opportunity. You're tearing it up, reel to the water. Don't don't drop the rod too fast. Yeah. A bass! Look at this. You're getting a swamp slam today. Look at that. <laughs> Today's Tackle Talk with uh, Chef Taylor Sanders, we used a seven foot falcon. This is a seven foot four actually, medium heavy action rod. This rod is ideal for throwing bladed baits. And what we did with Taylor was we threw the new bullseye spinner bait. This is from Z-Man. This is a bulletproof brand new product from them that is built to withstand redfish strikes over and over again. It has a lot of thump in the water, got high tinsel strength wire, doesn't bend very easily. It's, it's got the strike, uh, eye strike uh, jig on it and it's, it's kind of over-engineered. It's designed for big bull redfish. I've got a 4,000 Stratic on this particular setup. That's what I prefer out here for fishing these bladed baits. The 4,000 Stratic's got, it's spooled up with 15 pound um, Power Pro. Does a fantastic job for us out here. I put a short section, and when I say short, something under two feet that is 30 to 40 pound leader. You don't need to worry about the fish out here in the marsh being very leader shy. Some of the other bladed baits that we actually used on, on today's episode, I started her off and her first personal best redfish came on just a simple gold spoon. This one's made by Aqua Dream. I always add a swivel to it. It's a fantastic bait. It's fairly weedless because they have a 90 pound weed guard on the very front of it. It's overbuilt again. That's what's important out here is to use tackle that with, can withstand heavy fish in cover so you can pull on them hard. The standard gold spoon and what I used for for basically the balance of the day was the chatterbait. The Z-Man chatterbait, especially this redfish version, does an excellent job. It just shimmies through the water. I love the chartreuse or the white heads. I used golden boy on the back of the bait that I was using all day yesterday, but there are a number of colors, especially the ones with the chartreuse tails that do an excellent, excellent job out here. If you come out to Louisiana and you're fishing uh, zones that you've never fished before, to stay weedless and stay with an opportunity to always catch fish, consider throwing these bladed baits. They actually really work.
So one of the cool things about having Chef Taylor Sanders out here was the fact that we wanted to connect her with the lodge and do a little bit of cooking. What you might not know is we had brought some of the, the main guys who kicked fire disc uh, gas cookers off. They were out here as well. I, in fact, I even fished with them the day before I fished with Taylor. And it was really nice. We went out on the water, we showed those guys a great time, caught a bunch of redfish, caught a couple of flounder, you name it, black drum. It was just an outstanding day of fishing. Then Taylor came in, and when she came in, we knew we were gonna fish a couple hours, and then we were gonna go back to the lodge. Captain Todd was gonna fillet all the fish, and then we were gonna go right to the kitchen, start doing some prep, and start letting Taylor be Chef Taylor Sanders. So once we got the flounder, I knew that I wanted to cook it on the fire disc that night, but I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do, so I looked in the fridge here at the lodge, and I just had come up with some fish tacos with some fresh salsa on top of it, and I knew that would be a hit. So what do we do first? First, we have our flour tortillas, and we're just gonna warm these up on our fire disc, and we can just put these kind of around the outside. We don't wanna get them too crispy, just get them warmed up, and with the and with the fire disc, there's there's certain temperature zones because the way this gas cooker works is the the, the hot spot is in right the, in the is right in the center, yep. and then everything on the outside is kind of an adjustment temperature. Whether if you're well outside, you're you're really low and just warming up, and if you're a little bit, it's almost like saute, and then in the middle, it's super hot. Super That's what hot. I love about it. So this side we have the redfish and we have the flounder. We're just gonna throw a little bit of seasoning on it. This is just some pepper and some garlic salt. We're gonna go okay. really easy and simple with it and keep it really light. And we're gonna throw these right on the fire disc. So fish tacos are something that I absolutely love. They're so versatile and you can put absolutely any fish and absolutely any toppings you like on it. You can do corn tortillas, flour tortillas, whatever you really want. So um, I laid the fish in here. We're just gonna kind of let it set until it starts rising up off of it because we don't want anything to okay. stick. So we're gonna keep it on there and it'll start picking up from the fire disc and then we'll know when to flip it. So I always start it off at low and then you can always add heat if you need it. Majority of the time, you, you can don't. just move it closer to the center. center. I am very farm to table. I love fresh whatever, if it's just caught that day or if you just killed it that day to cook it or anything that comes fresh off the farm. So fishing and cooking go hand in hand because you can just fish all day long, catch it, fillet it, and cook it right up. It's super fresh and that's what I honestly love to do. So all we're gonna do right now, you can take your taco. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna add a little bit of lettuce to it. Not much at all. Just a little. We're gonna add our piece of fish right off the fire disc. Add it right there in the center. And I'm gonna add a little bit of salsa. peach salsa right on top. I've always loved cooking. I'm a really creative person, but like arts and drawings and stuff like that is not my thing. So cooking is the way I show my creativity. Um, it's my version of art. So I've always been around it. My family owns a restaurant, my dad's cooked. I've just grown up around it and I just, I will absorb anything and everything like a sponge that I can. I love working with different chefs and especially in Naples that have a ton of different um, opportunities all the time to work with amazing chefs and learn all their tips and tricks. We have two made right here. So this is the red fish with the peach salsa and then this is the flounder with the apple peach salsa. That looks good. I might have to try that. That one's that one's a little more unique, something I haven't had. Alright guys, I'm going I in. I feel like time. Guy Fieri on <laughs> Diner Drive and Dive. <laughs> really simple, really easy, really fast. Something fresh, something light, nothing fried, nothing super heavy. And it won't take very long to clean this up. It's just basically a wet towel. Yep. Let it you, cool down. You wipe it out. Wipe it right out. And Oil it and make it ready for the next time. Right, because it's seasoned. Yep. It works just like a cast iron skillet. The more you use it, the better it gets. I'm going to keep eating. Can't help so. To be able to show people this amazing product, that's what I was most excited for, to be able to cook fish and cook it right on the fire disc. I was just so astounded by that just to be able to show people really how it is and how easy it is to use also. Fishing on the boat, being on the water, 
just the fight for those fish, that was so awesome. To summarize the entire experience having Taylor out here, it really came off great. We had some great fellowship every evening around the, the dinner table here at Cajun Fishing Adventures. The cooking was a huge part of this show. And then to have the guys out on the water and I got a chance to fish with the owners of Fire Disc and their dad, Steve, who was an amazing guy. Uh, and, and then t and Taylor and her mom, they really, really are down to earth folks. I mean, everyone was just totally impressed with how their family lives and breathes the outdoors. And I think Cajun Fishing Adventures really benefited from the fact that they were out here because everyone, I mean, we had other guests out here in the back lodge upstairs and everyone had a great time. I think Taylor gained a few fans, uh, including myself. And I wanna be the guy that says 20 years from now, I remember when she was a 17 year old kid and I took her fishing.